Hey you guys, welcome to Sandals Church where we are all about this vision of being real. And we are so glad that you joined us today and excited because here at Sandals Church, again, we're all about this vision of being real, but it's not just for the adults. We have launched this brand new experience just for Sandals kids. So if you're a kid in the room right now, or maybe you're a big kid at heart, I would love to invite you to head on over to sandalskids.tv where Sandals Church Kids has launched this incredible new experience. So we want you to be a part of it and we're so glad that you chose to be a part of service today. So enjoy the message and have a great day. Hey, welcome to Sandals Church and our worship weekend service. Look, if you're visiting church, worship is this weird thing where people are raising their hands, some people are shouting, some people are staring, some people are looking at their phones, and you don't know what this is all about. Worship starts with the first commandment. God said in the 10 commandments, thou shalt have no other gods but me. Look, we're all designed to worship something. Some of us worship sports, some of us worship our marriage, some of us worship uh, the opposite sex, same sex. We worship all kinds of things, and God says don't worship anything but me. And so here's the thing, you're gonna worship something because God made you to worship. And that's literally what we see when we go to a great great uh, Lakers game or, or a great Dodgers game or Angels game, and we see everybody standing up and cheering and celebrating, and we're saying, oh, this is awesome. That's what worship is, we're saying, oh, Oh God, you're awesome. Oh God, you're incredible. And so I just wanna encourage you, don't check out on this weekend, but check in. Because here's the reality, if you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping something else. So why we worship God? We worship God for who he is. Here's why worship of anything else is wrong. No matter how beautiful, no matter how amazing, no matter how talented, all that person does, all that thing does, is reflect the glory of the creator, of the one who made it. This is why the Bible is so important. Genesis 1 says, in the beginning God created. He created everything and everyone. And so why worship something? Why not worship the, the one who made this something? So we talked about the beginning of scripture, and the Bible's got a lot of books, 66 of them, but in the last book, Revelation chapter four, it gives a picture of heaven, 24 elders, and they fall down before God who's seated on the throne, and they worship him who lives forever and ever. Life emanates from God, life is in God. If you wanna live forever, you gotta be in God, because you can't sustain life on your own. It says they cast their crowns before him, saying, worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and have been created. We worship God because he's the creator. Anytime you've held a baby and you just can't believe at what's just been made, that's because God. Man, if you've fallen in love, that's God. If you've seen a beautiful sunset, that's God. If you've been to our amazing forests in California, that's God. The Bible says the heavens declare, declare the glory of God. And that's what we wanna do in worship. And that's what we need to come in here and we need to be excited. We shouldn't be led in worship, but we should join our worship teams in worship. I don't know some of you are like, that's just not me. But the reality is, you probably do worship something. Man, I see guys all the time. They'll scream at their TV like it matters and they come in church and they swallow their whistle and their voice and they don't say a thing. Look guys, worship isn't just for women, it's for you. That's why the Bible says, I want men everywhere to lift up hands, holy hands, free from anger. Look, you worship your sports team, but really you're angry at your sports team. We need to come into church and worship God and set aside anger and praise God. Here's why we worship. Some of you are like, well, well, I don't know. I don't know God, I don't know what he's done for me. Well, here's what the Bible says. Hebrews 12, 28 says this. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Look, we live in California, man, everything shakes, everything burns. We have a kingdom that cannot burn. We live in a, we, we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And so let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Here's what God's done for you, is he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. Jesus died so you could live. Man, at our Hunter Park campus, we got this character. His name is Ken. Uh, he's a Kiwi, he's from New Zealand. He's got this big, long, beautiful beard, and I love Ken. Now here's the amazing thing about Ken. Ken's a drummer, he only has one ear. God knows what he's done to his working ear because he plays the drums so loud. But man, he's one of our lead worshipers at our church. And you don't know his story, but Ken almost died this year. Think about a blender in your kitchen where you're like mashing up potatoes or you're mixing something. Imagine something like that, but it's giant. You see, Ken's a farmer and he has to mash together things to, to grow the product that he grows right here in Southern California. Man, he farms wild mushrooms, that's what he does. 
and he has to mix the, uh, the, the substance that he plants the mushrooms in, the mushrooms in before they grow them. And he was in it cleaning it and there was a miscommunication and it got turned on while he was in it. Think about being in a human sized blender. He should have died. He could have died, but he didn't. God was merciful and God saved him. And I think back to a night of worship with just our worship team where I watched him worshiping. Man, he was punching the air, screaming and crying out because there's just something magical that happens when you know you should be dead, but you're alive. And that's just not for Ken, that's for all of us. You should be dead. You should be dead forever, but because of Jesus Christ, because of God's love for you, you're alive, you're saved. And we should worship like we mean it. And so many of you guys, you say you love God, tell your face. You, you, you say you love God, tell your voice, tell your hands. Set yourself free. And, and here's why you're afraid to just let loose in worship. Can I just be honest with you? Sandals is not where we need to be in terms of our worship. I think we're a good Bible teaching church. I think we are a good community, but I think we need to grow in the area of worship. I think we're lacking in the area of worship and we need to step it up. And that's why we're doing this today. We need to worship God like we care. And the reason we're not worshiping is because we're focused on ourselves today. We're focused on something else that's going on. Worship is the action, the specific action of taking attention and focus off yourself and placing it on God. And here's the beautiful thing. Worship has an amazing effect, not just on, on the church, but on the individuals who praise and worship. Look, you want your spirits lifted? Lift your spirits to God. Take the attention off yourself. Worship is an amazing medicine for depression, discouragement, and anxiety. Because when you're focused on God, you're not worshiped, you're not worried about anything because you're worshiping God. Let us be grateful. When we come into the church, man, we need to be enthusiastic. We've all been to an event where the energy's dead and we wish we weren't there. And we've all been to events where it's just, it's magical, it's amazing, it's incredible. Some concert, some sporting event, some, some, some dance or something that you went to as a kid and you just remember, oh my gosh, I'll never forget this moment. That's what worship should be. The Bible says that you should worship the, the Lord with gladness. Come before, him, come before him, Psalms 102 says, with singing and with joy. And if you love God, tell your face. If you love God, tell your hands. Sing out loud. It doesn't matter whether you can sing or not. That's why we spent all this money on these speakers. God wants to hear you. That's why the Bible says make a joyful noise. Look, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but I can worship God. And I'm gonna be worshiping God with you guys this weekend. I'm gonna be led in worship with you guys this weekend by our worship team who's prayed, who's planned, who's, who's practiced, who, who's readied themselves to lead us in worship. And if we just stand there and we just watch, we're an audience. God's not calling you to be an audience. God's calling you to be the church. God's calling you to join him in worship. And here's the other thing. I hear a lot of people say, well, I can worship at home on my own. But you know what? There's something amazing when I go to a concert, when I'm with other people who love music, who love this band, who wanna be there, and when we sing together, and the same thing is true in church, there's something special that happens when we worship God together. Psalms 22, 25 says this, I will praise you in the assembly. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. You see, worship isn't just about you and God. It's about God's people and God. And we join with God's people and we remind ourselves, it's not just about me, but it's about God's family. It's about God's people. It's about God's church. You see, worship helps me fight my greatest enemy. It's me, my selfishness. And this is your opportunity to take the attention and focus off you and put it on God. And I can't imagine what God's gonna do in your life as you take your gaze off yourself, off something else, and you put it on God. And then lastly, we're gonna end with offering. Offering is so important. God has so richly given to us. At the end of every service, we have this offering. Romans 12, one says this, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to, pre to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Man, as you sing, as you worship, God might convict you of some sin in your life, something you need to let go, lay it down and say, God, I'm gonna kill this in my life so I can live for you. Invite the Holy Spirit into your heart, into your life and say, Holy Spirit, look at me, examine me. If there's anything that needs to go, I lay it down. I offer it as a sacrifice for you. Look, I just wanna pray for you right now. 
I know worship is scary, and especially those of us who don't feel like we're musically inclined or, or rhythm is a foreign language. It's not about rhythm. It, it, it's, it's not about ability or giftedness. It's about desire. And I wanna pray for you right now that God would give you a desire to worship Him with everything that you have. Because Sandals Church, we're an amazing church, but we need to grow in our worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, right now, Lord, I just join with your saints and I ask for forgiveness, God, for not worshiping you the way we should. Lord, and, and we don't just need to apologize to you, but we need to apologize to our friends and our visitors that are here today. We need to let them know, God, that, that you are God and you are good and you have saved us and you love us and we love you. So Father, we offer this worship up to you and we thank you for everything you've done. We ask that you are blessed and pleased with our worship. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Worthy of our praise Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus is a name above every other name. Jesus is the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we
across this room, all together worshiping one God. It's a glimpse of what the revelation talks about when it says every tribe and every tongue will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you imagine what it will be like when we worship him face to face? We get a chance right now to sing one more song and to let your voice be heard for the breath in your lungs and for the life in your body and for the goodness of God. Let's sing to him together.
Sandals Church is a nonprofit that operates from donations from people like you. And when you donate, your money goes to helping us create places for people to be real all over the world. And if you want to be a part of what God is doing through Sandals Church, and if you want to give to this vision of being real, head on over to donate.se.